you think when people call themselves a Hebrew Israelite? That's a huge question I get all the time. I actually don't have a problem with um, someone identifying as an ethnicity. That's, that's on them. I do wonder what they utilize as their historical, biblical, or genealogical framework by which they come to that conclusion. Because usually if they come to it in using not the best information, the road isn't going to be great for them theologically and biblically. But for the most part, it's not a big issue for me at all. But what is an issue and what I do ask questions about is this. What's your view of God? What's your view of scripture? What's your view of Jesus? What's your view of justification? How do you get saved? And not only how do you get saved, what and who keeps you saved? Do you keep you saved by what you do? Or does God keep you saved and you work out your salvation versus for your salvation? Also, um, how, do they do, how do they view the people of God, prophecy, and eschatology or last things? One of the things that I always look for is, are you an individual on a spiritual journey? Or do you have any type of solid community that helps you flesh out what you say you are and believe? One thing I get concerned about is if I hear more about your Hebrew identity than I do Jesus and salvation. That's a problem. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, your fellow believers of this faith, of this ministry and truth. Also, shalom to you, for you sisters, the sincere ones, and shalom to the elect. So anyway, I believe this is Dr. Eric or Anthony Mason, something like that. Uh, I think his name is Dr. Eric Mason. Eric Mason. These doctors, they get their doctor's degree through going to these short seminary schools. Uh, maybe he has some other doctrine. I don't know. He writes a lot of books. And um, he has a problem. I don't know why he asks so many questions, but we'll try to answer them sincerely right for the um for the elect or you that's new coming in you may hear all these questions and how do we line it up with scripture number one lining it up through the spirit is number one right we see it we read it in scripture in the spirit it, this first of all a christian always talks about faith and spirituality <clears throat> that's what it's all about now, as he speak of the law and some Israelites, they speak different than us at Great Millstone. But we're going to try to go through a couple of these things. I don't think I'll pull a lot of scriptures up, but he wants to go. Well, first he says, what's the view on the people of God and prophecy? Well, these people here, I mean, this man, Dr. Eric Mason, believes that some people can put themselves in a particular land that is called uh, the Israelites, so to speak. Let me say that. I'm, I'm speaking codes, right? And then say, okay, that they're, they're the people. Now, what's crazy is these Christians and Dr. Eric Mason and the rest of them, they so much try to take away the passion that we have in the belief of who we are. And they say it doesn't matter because God will love you through faith and save you through faith. But yet those people over there, they claim that they're the people of God and they're the chosen, right? So they're allowed to believe that they're the chosen, right? And they need faith. So instead of these Christians just coming in on us, they need to go on them and say, it doesn't matter if you claim you're the chosen or not. But they won't do that. So that's our, the view on our people, the people of God and prophecy, historical, biblical, geological framework and everything else he said. That's what these doctors do, man. Let's go. Let's go to Deuteronomy. You know, uh, let's go to Deuteronomy 28, and let's go to 16. Right? Um, I gotta read 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all His commandments and His statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come. Uh, come upon thee and overtake thee curse shalt thou be in the city curse shalt thou be in the field curse shalt thou be in a basket in the store curse shalt thou be in the fruit of the body the fruit of the land the increase of his kind and the flocks of the sheep 
Cursed shall thou be when thou comest in, cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Now, when you read the book of Deuteronomy, as in other scriptures, you have different time frames of history, uh, according to history, uh, uh, that links with the biblical Israelites. So, just because we do link some of this with the slave trade, uh, some of these things, as Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 says, there's no new thing. I will punish you through generations, right? So, some of these things happened in 70 AD, or let me say, they always, all the scholars say 70 AD, but some of these things happened in Babylon. So, you know, and throughout different uh, captivities that we had, you know, even in Egypt, we had certain things that happened to us that seems kind of similar, right? But this captivity is Jeremiah 17 and 4. It says, Thou shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. So now we go to Deuteronomy 28 and 48, and then we're going to get to the point. Uh, it says, Therefore shalt thy serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and thirst, and in, in nakedness, and in one of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Right? So we see this happen in the captivity of our captivity uh, coming into America. But you see these things uh, repeat themselves. Right? Which would have happened in the past. Right? There's things that are happening in Babylon. See, the Lord put a perpetual curse on us that's been going on through generations. It's not just the fact that we woke up now because of any history before the 1500s we don't know about. We're reading our history book right here, right? This is when you go down to the 68th verse, which definitely happened in the slave, Atlantic slave trade, right? You know, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, right? Now, when we're going into this, uh, everybody wants to say, uh, that's not, it's not biblical, it has nothing to do with you, and this is our own people. Our own people know that they've been lied to. They've, lied, they've been lied to about the history, right? Uh, a lot of people have woken up to the fact that this has to be us, right? You don't see other people going around saying that they were born on slave ships. They don't say it. And the fact that, um, let's say that's the case in 70 AD and they were sold on ships, the word ships wouldn't even have to be mentioned because it was so close. I'm just saying if they did take ships. The only reason why they went through the waters is so the, is so the Lord can, uh, uh, so the Egyptians, if they followed the Israelites, they, they would get swallowed up in the waters. But you technically didn't need a ship. Look at the map. So if anybody caught any torture, right, of any kind on a ship, you immediately go to the transatlantic slave trade. Right? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there sh thou shalt be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. And no man shall buy you. That's old English word for redeem you. Now some translators, they translated and said that you should sell yourselves. You should offer yourselves up to slavery. I don't know who offers themselves up to be slaves, but this is what they say. And they're trying to do everything uh, to erase, you know, everything that we've taught, everything we found out. You Christians haven't done a good job at raising the people. All you told them to do is pray to the white Jesus who slept with his sister whose father jumped in and tag team Rodrigo, and uh, they both had sex with his sister and daughter. <clears throat> you know, this is what you people worship. And now that we found you, you know that he's not, not him, you have an issue and say now it doesn't matter. But it mattered when we was following him as a white man. So you can see the mindset of Christians and mainly the black Christian. The black Christian uh, has become comfortable in this uh, captivity, right? So they don't want they don't want you to wake up, and that's that's the big issue. They and some of them are paid, some of them are agents. Uh, you got this guy Jephthah from One Body who says the the slave ships never existed. Who was there taking pictures, right? Yeah, just like the moon land, and they had pictures of that, but nobody was. 
uh, who took the pictures of that. But when you go back, you had photography, right? You had people who painted, right? So when you look at all the history, now if you got a question if they were slave ships, now you got to question all the things that happened in the Bible. How do we know that's true? This is my next point, right? How do we get saved? This is uh, uh, Dr. Eric Mason is saying. How do you get saved and, and um, how do you identify with, uh, he said, being a Hebrew Israelite, right? Identifying with a Hebrew Israelite more than Jesus is a problem. Now, I don't understand that part either because let's go here. I don't understand why he even said something like that. Revelation 22 and 16. I, Yahweh, have seen my angel. See, the whole point of identifying with the Hebrew Israelites, right, being a Hebrew Israelite, is, is the Messiah and the Father. That is the whole point. Of course we identify with Yahweh and Yahweh Shai more so than anything. But that's all in unison together. That's why we don't need to wear fringes everywhere we go, right? Some groups believe you got to wear fringes all the time everywhere you go. Well, the, the fringes was worn for a remembrance of our heritage, Right, that's what that was for. But the Messiah came, and now we have a remembrance of the Yah of Yahweh. That's our remembrance. That's our Savior. The law is not our Savior. Right? We know that sin is transgression of the law, so we do follow the law. We're not saying not to follow the law, but what's bigger than the law is um, being saved and through Yahweh. So we go to. Um, how do we know? How do, uh, I believe he asked something about um, what do you do to get saved? You know, something like that. Well, let's go to, let me go to Ephesians maybe. Uh, I don't know where I'm at. Let's go to Romans 9. I'm going to just, sometimes you just got to go in the spirit. Romans 9 and 10. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, right? For the children being not yet born, talking about Jacob and Esau, neither having done any good or evil for the purpose of God, according to the election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth, right? So at the end of the day, what do you do to get salvation? Well, if the Lord have chosen you, you're going to get saved. But you're already the elect if you're the elect. So right now, none of us know. So we're all in the fight to try to be the elect. So you, as, uh, the, as the Messiah said in Matthew 5 and 48, be ye therefore perfect, which perfect goes into completion, even as your Father in heaven is perfect, right? It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated, Right? That's that's it, you know. It's there's nothing you can do if if you eat them, if you're the other nation, you you can't be saved, right? It's just what it is. You, there's nothing you can do. Isaiah 14 says he will have mercy on Jacob and yet choose Israel and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, the other Israelites, okay, and the house of Jacob shall possess them uh, for servants. And handmaids. There's nothing you can do. See, all this atrocities and sicknesses that was perpetuated on our people. And if anybody needs saving, have you looked in a world at our people? And then they set these agents up to tell us to be comfortable, to go watch your basketball and your sports, right? Go do your thing, play your music, go to work and stay busy. Meanwhile, you're being further, further oppressed. You got the worst food in the so-called black communities. I'll say that. It's not a real community. But in our surroundings where we live, it's the worst food, the worst uh, media, right? The worst kind of entertainment that's forced on us, man. Who have completely destroyed us and annihilated us. Look at the ease. What I mean by ease is the black woman. Look at the young black men. Look how how far off. 
What the scripture says in Jeremiah 2, how thou become a degenerate, a degenerate plant, right? Let's go to Ephesians 2 and 8. How do we get saved, right? How do we get saved? For by grace are ye saved. This means you can't keep the whole law. That's why you're saved through grace. You need grace to be saved. If you could keep the whole law, you wouldn't need grace, right? For by grace we are saved, and what does it say? Through faith. That's how you're saved. But, and this is where some Israelites and some Christians get it confused. We're going to go on. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, right? Not of works, lest any man should boast. But does this mean, as in James 2, faith without works is dead? Does this mean uh, you don't have works? No, you still have to have works. The reason why I said not of works, because you can't get saved on just works. You have to get saved on belief. Right? This is why Revelation 2 and 10, as I keep quoting, it says, uh, um, basically, be faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. That's what he said. Be faithful unto death. And the only way we're going to get saved is through our Messiah, Yahweh. So if you're just boasting on the law, you have got, you've gotten away from the whole point of the Messiah coming here on earth. And have to work miracles for you to believe. Just saying. Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. This is saying the call of Jeremiah. And before thou canst go forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So here we go again. The Most High have already ordained his elect from day one and this is why when you don't believe in reincarnation you're foolish right because if if um, your grandma or these Christians think anything after 1500s Christianity if you didn't believe in Jesus and you went to be with the Lord he would throw you in hell but notice when you go to the church and the sons get gunned down uh, or the daughter die from gunshot or get sick and die you notice even how wicked they were. You notice the grandma with a big hat and, a, and a high heels, always saying they're going to be with the Lord and the Lord got them because they know in their spirit there's no real hell, man. They already know that. And then you guys who woke up to the fact that you're Israelites, what about the people before we knew knew what we were Israelites? So they got to burn in hell. So you know, it's a lot of questions uh, when it comes to that, man. Let's go to Isaiah 10 in, in 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that a remnant of Israel, as such as escaped the house of Jacob, shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. So uh, also, uh, what is that? Joel 2 and 32. It says, um, he who calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered out of Zion shall come deliverance for the Israelites. So, you know, when we answer these questions, it's easy for us, especially as Israelites for the most part, because we know who he's coming to save. Number one, the elect, that's who he's coming to deliver. And all Israel in Romans eleven twenty six shall be saved, right? On, you know, on the other side, bringing back through genealogies the other, the other Israelites that didn't make it. But the first go around deliverance out of here, out of Babylon, right, is um, the Savior who's going to come and save his elect. So Proverbs 20 and 24 says, man's goings are the Lord. So if you are the elect, you're going to do what the Lord say to do. You're going to do his work. You're going to finish. You're going to be made perfect. That's all we can do. These Christians believe that your salvation isn't set. But when you do wake up and believe in Jesus, now your sa salvation is guaranteed. And that's absolutely false. Because all those people thought they had guaranteed salvation who went back out of the Christian church, they ain't saved. And who caused them to go back out of the church? Jeremiah 10 and 31. It is not in, in, in man to direct his step, but the Lord. So you can't boast and say you're saved because you don't know if you're saved. 
but the Christian teach that. Anyway, hope this lesson was edifying. That's all I have on that show.